Okay, so I'm going to do pose 2A of the Legionnaires from um, the Horus Heresy. I'm going to do this one as an Imperial Fist. So that means that I'm going to use the <coughs> uh, bayonet blade instead of the chain store, uh, I suppose chainsaw style one, the uh, serrated one. So what I've done here is you can just see I've highlighted in green which ones I'm actually going to cut. You can see I started cutting this before and then realised I need to make a video on it. So starting off with number seven. And again, you can see I'm really trying to like clean this up as I go. Now, you'll notice that I'm, I'm terrible sometimes with my knife discipline. <clears throat> I really shouldn't be. really need to be more careful because look what I did when I was younger. I actually sliced a Stanley knife through my thumb once I had to go to A&E. So you think I would have learned by now to be a bit more conscientious with my blades, but there we go. I'm a lot better than I used to be. See, I'm just kind of using the flat of the blade rather than this way sometimes because I just find it's a lot easier to control at scraping off the little bits of plastic. Okay. Then, obviously, after number seven, I need to get number eight out, and then number nine. Even with bits like this that aren't really going to be seen, it's still worth just smoothing them off because then you'll get a better fit in the model later on. Okay, now a bit of uh, glue discipline here. You see, the first time you have a that's why I always keep my tissue here, because the first time I ever squeeze one of these, it always comes out too fast, really. Don't like it. And then once I've dealt with the sort of the first blockage, then I can start applying it. I try to be very, very... I don't like being over generous, because it'll all just, like, push out of the sides. You know, it's what, well, before I actually let it sort of glue down properly, I do this, and that's because... I want all of the actual glue to get air in it. So not just the surface stuff. I want to make sure that everything's got air to it and that'll help it dry better once that's sealed. Part of the reason you sometimes get models splitting when you glue them is because you're basically putting it in little bits and then just forcing the model together. You'll end up with bits that haven't got glue on it, bits that aren't drying and then sometimes like the... The, the glue might be drying up in one place and expanding in the other. It's also why it's a good idea to actually just paint the ones that you're looking for in advance because it makes it so much easier to find the next part. It's so much quicker to go along. Obviously, sometimes I've got my file here for anything that I just want to sand down a bit more, particularly if you've got a big lump on there. Okay, great. Again, see the way I try and hold my glue is I'm actually pointing the glue upwards. That way it's not got all the downwards pressure. Pushing it out, you can see I've got a bit too much on there, so I'm just going to dab it gently across there. I just don't want that glue squeezing out down the sides of the model as I go. I don't make sure that fits. So it's a problem with these. You've got to make sure that they stand up perfectly and the feet are flat on the floor. Because if you mess this stage up, if you get that foot on wrong, you'll, oh, you've got all the problem of breaking the model down later on, repositioning things. Uh, you'll notice that I'm not pinning anything. I could pin if I wanted to, but obviously that would just needlessly increase the length of the video. Okay, fine, 10 and 11 now. Okay. 
tells well my clippers are rolled that's why i'm getting such bad cut lines i really need to invest in a new pair of clippers Even here, it may feel like, well, that can't be seen, so do I need to be neat with it? Yeah, because the shoulder pad has to go on later on, and if it's not neat, the shoulder pad will sit on at an odd angle. Now, you should notice here that there are like little protrusions popping outwards. Now that should help the arms go on, but even with those there, I do have this horrible habit of finding that you think that they would sit in the perfectly the right position every single time. But even with those, I found that there's like even a tiny little bit of give. There's like this tiny little. Oh, that's another problem. Sometimes not letting things dry. You see there, you think that it would not move because of the little kind of joint that's been designed on this, but actually it's just not very robust. It doesn't come out far enough. And as a result, it, it's very easy to get a bit of play. That's why I'm going to very, very quickly get this bolt gun on. Okay, another good reason to make sure you've... Uh, identify the parts that you're going to use straight away. get this on so I really want to get this bolt gun on before those arms are dried into place that way I can wiggle them on the last one I did I wasn't quick enough and the arms dried and I noticed after I was done it was just not quite where I wanted it to be. There we go. There, you see, you can see there, can't you? See. So this one of these arms is not where I want it to be. See if I can move it around a bit and get it right. There we go, right. That may not seem much, but just making sure that I actually got that done before it dried is it's just made sure that the arms are in the right place now and there's no odd little joint gone. Now sorry on now. So while that's like drying a bit, I'm gonna start cleaning up some of the other parts. So I need not my camera there, that's an help. 40 just there. Get that down. I'm going to find these ones over here. So I've got my shoulder pads.
start gluing this one together now as well. So if I start gluing that now, you'll notice that on the instructions for this, um, when you actually move on to post two A in the instructions, they don't actually show this part of regluing this together. <sighs> It helps if I actually put the glue in the right place. I'm going to kick myself for doing that. Focus a bit more. There we go. Delete it now. Yeah, so um, on post way, you'll see that it doesn't actually show this part in the instructions. Uh, all it actually says is 3C. What it means is if you look under pose 1, 3C, because every single one of these shoulder pads goes together in exactly the same way and they're all numbered 32 and 33 on the sprue so there we go i'm going to wait for that glue to dry and then i'm going to just gently rub it off obviously now i need shoulder pad 35 Again, sometimes when I'm looking at these, it's like, surely these are all identical and it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the arms are in slightly different positions and they all have... I mean, they're all pretty much the same underneath. And you might find that they do actually just universally fit wherever. But you don't know if they're slightly different shapes, slightly different size to fit on each individual model. When I do my Night Lords later on, I'm actually going to see if the old style ones actually work. Um, the old Night Lord shoulder pads, see if they fit nicely actually, because I really enjoy doing that if they universally fit. Then, get their backpack off ready. Of here, 47. I'm not going to clean that up yet. I'm going to start gluing some of these pieces on. Now, let's have a look. Admittedly, if you're like myself who likes doing a bit of converting and a bit of kit bashing, you might want to not put all these parts on right away. You might want to sort of do all the bodies, build all the bodies first with the crap bolt guns and then leave all the other additional parts off for later on because you might decide to kit bash. Um, particularly if you're doing a Shattered Legion. If you're doing a Shattered Legion, you might want to go completely extreme, get some uh, first born tactical marines in Mark 7 plate, kind of mix and match them around really. Okay. Because one of the things you think if i'm right about this let me look here let this dry the studded shoulder pads combined with say a mark 7 aquila helmet that would actually make some great heresy mark 5 armor i think it's called i'm pretty certain i'm getting my armor marks correct there yeah you, so you could create heresy level armor you know <laughs> So if I'm not dropping things, uh, which would look really great. You know, you'd really get a, a nice style then to your army. So for those of you who were doing potentially things like um, salamanders, uh, they're definitely a good option to make, make some Shattered Legion style armor, heresy armor. These guys obviously are great for um, <clears throat> Raven Guard, Alpha Legion. Obviously, I like the idea of them being for... Imperial Fisks, could they, they would get the latest technology because they're pretty much heavily stationed on Earth. Although, oddly enough, my one, my Imperial Fists are going to be the 407th. Sorry, not 400, 401st. Uh, I'm planning on doing them. So I'm planning on doing some, some unique features. So I'm potentially, I've, I've not decided yet if I want to give them... Either a crimson fist 
so a red fist or and this is something i've been thinking about instead of doing black on the trims the second color that the heresy imperial fists are i may potentially be considering um actually making that black blue um the same color that i'll do in my night lords because obviously that's the color of the crimson fist and i think those touches will make it look nice i might even do both i'm not settled on it yet okay so now that i've got that on the way i'm going to pop across to frame a so with frame a i'm going to take a few key things off this uh what i would say is if you don't like all these little extra bits on your models, um, I'm putting them on because obviously I'm doing a tutorial how to put this together. Normally I would leave these off, paint them separately and glue them on when I'm done. But if you do it for one model, do them for all. Otherwise you're going to have... A sort of disconnect discontinuity between the story you're telling and i am a great believer that your model should tell a personal story and in this case as i said these imperial fists um they're going to be proto crimson fists that will allow me to play it around a bit come up with different colors different styles um maybe i'll do a bit of converting later on um of course i'm gonna have alexis in there you know um see if i can pick him up from forge world i would hate to lose that and i think that guy's gonna look absolutely gorgeous done up in yellow with um I said what i hope will be dark blue um where the black should be things on the right way around okay there we go we've got the and then just a couple more additions from here then i'm going to go grab that grenade pack he doesn't love some grenades Deciding where to put these, really, I think. Because they don't feel like they fit properly, like, right underneath the miniature, it, to be quite honest. But when I put them around the side, they look odd. I think I'm going to... There we go. Yeah, they feel like they fit there. Though I have to admit, when I think about it, you know... You could imagine them constantly knocking those damn things when he's fighting, <laughs> when he's moving his bolt, bolter up and down. Well, couldn't you really? It's potential. Um, you know, so this this model, to be quite honest, he's quite he's quite simple to put together, as you can see. He's kind of got a forward marching process. Um, obviously, if you're going to do something nicer with the bases, don't glue him on at this point, particularly if you're going to order yourself some custom bases just for now i'm gonna get him stuck on here it's always come on glue on okay so there we go that is a uh, pose 2a legion mark 6 from the age of darkness